So we're, we're seeing, you know, a gradual increase in, in the quality of care uh, in, in the developed world, and, and, and this may, you know, add to that. We're seeing, you know, a gradual increase in the developing world with a bit more access to, to products, but it's, it's quite slow, isn't it? Uh, is there anything on the horizon that could change this dramatically in a shorter time? I don't think it's slow. I think it's important that we recognize that there's no other genetic disease that's made the progress of hemophilia over the last 40 years. Hemophilia is the paradigm for improving genetic diseases. So we're frustrated, but we have to appreciate that the progress is unbelievably fast compared to every other genetic disease. Yeah, I, well, I, I disagree with Jerry. I, th I think <laughs> living, living in a developing world um, and, and obviously being part of the WFH, um, it is actually extremely slow. It's frustrating. Um, I see progress going forward, uh, and I have no problem in recalibrating what would be considered to be the target in the developed world. But you must just remember, by doing that, you're actually increasing the gap between the developing world and the developed world. You need to have a mechanism of closing that gap. And, and, and I see the closing of that gap as as critical. Um, the new products will actually, to some extent, address the issue because I think we know that there's a big market out there and most of it now is actually in the developing world. So if the companies can recalibrate to that difference and say we, we actually, you know, a, a mark is right. The, the US naturally, Europe naturally will move. They, they will reset the, uh, the trough, 8, 10, 15, uh, but, but then well, maybe three, five, Johnny. Eight, eight, ten, fifteen is a long way away, you know. <laughs> yeah. but, but it's a global market that we yep. live in, and, yep. and we, we, we can't think of it as just the U.S. and Europe. I mean, the companies can make large volumes of money in the U.S., and it's the it's one of the largest, and it's a growth market. Europe is, is a stagnant or a shrinking market for the pharmaceutical companies, and then the rest of the world is where there is potential. I, I love the analogy of cell phones and landlines. Jerry uh, referenced cell phones earlier. I mean, there are countries in the world today that have completely skipped technologies. They're not stringing the landlines. So, so is that technology that on the horizon? Is there anything that we can, that we can see like, like that? Gene therapy could be the next game changer for, for hemophilia B. It's not going to be the same treatment available for everyone uh, as, as the factors are, but uh, there are other game changers on the horizon that are going to um, uh, allow this to continue to be a very dynamic market in the years ahead. But in this perspective, I, I mean, I kind of agree more with Johnny than Jerry on, on uh, the fact that, yes, hemophilia had the uh, uh, fastest growth, but that might be because there was the highest profit. You had good, uh, 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 good uh, researcher and investigator creating new molecules, but you also had money to do so. And there's no model that can raise the profit uh, without enlarging the base. You, you, if you have a beautiful car, but only 10 people in the country can buy a car, they can buy 10 each and that's it. You need to have a car that can be bought by a larger base and you still can keep the system alive. So I'm not sure that having had the fastest grow means that there is uh, still space for grow. I think that uh, there's improvement, but it's the first time when we went from plasma to recombinant, that was safety. No one will, will put uh, the, the minimum question mark of paying for safety. Now we are saying, well, it's a convenience or it's a, a easier way of getting to a higher trough, is a easier way of getting your treatment. Is, is not the same level of improvement and you might not be able to continue to grow that way. And unfortunately, there's no buy-in into this. We will have no progress afterwards. Is is a is an hyperbole. You are close to be tangent to a to a place where or you have game changer like like uh, uh, gene therapy or you, you won't grow anymore. Economies die sometimes. Can I just say that you know I, I we have made progress in the last forty years and, and you certainly notice it if you live in a wealthy country. But twenty years ago WFH used to talk about the 80-20 paradigm. 80% 80 of people in the world had little or no access to care. Despite 20 years of intensive programming and work, that's only gone down to 70%. Do you want to wait another 20 years for, to go to 60% and 50? 
the, the best way to get down, to get that down quickly, is economics. We need lower cost products that we're going to develop in emerging countries. Now, I know, Jerry, that you need the R&D investment to go in and these new products, these new longer lasting products will take a significant share of the market in, in Europe, in the USA, in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, if they're priced correctly, certainly. And that should hopefully make the price of the currently available products uh, affordable for more countries. That's probably the best way to do this, the bi-specific antibodies, gene therapy, other things in the future. It comes down to cost. Governments will not pay $100,000, 100,000 euros per patient per year in most countries for, for hemophilia. I agree entirely with what you've said, but I want to emphasize what Mark said, is that there's multiple fronts to this, mm -hmm. and having the cost is only one issue. If we take, for instance, think about poverty. How many people in the world in 1960 lived on less than a dollar a day? All the governments giving, all the foreign aid in the world did nothing to change that. It was the economy that grew and the economy that provided the wherewithal that those people raised to their living standards. It's the same thing. We have to grow the industry and then they will expand into the developing world. If we restrict their profit margin by setting tenders so nobody can make a profit, we will not see a future. And I really strongly encourage the hemophilia community to tell me, if you're happy where you're at now, then stop producing new products. If you think you want a future, give the pharmaceutical company scientists some profit to drive them to develop better products. But it has to be enthusiastically communicated that you want something new and better.